moving on to another question here which of the following vertebral fractures involves disruption of ligaments of anterior middle and posterior column all together let's take a look i'm sure by now you must have understood that you are dealing with what you are dealing with the c1 you are dealing with atlas now this is basically the dense or the odontoid process which is coming up from the axis and getting fitted into the atlas making atlanto axial joint apart from this i want you to see this green structure here which i have now labeled in front of you this structure here is what is called as the tal the transverse atlantal ligament this is called as the tal the transverse atlantal ligament i can show you the fracture of the c1 that is atlas in different views the first category of c1 atlas fracture is the mid substance tear of the transverse atlantal ligament i'm sure you all can see this is the mid substance tear of the transverse atlantal ligament second i can show you avulsion of this ligament and this is how the avulsion looks like take a look this is how avulsion looks like the ligament gets avulsed from the bony insertion so we are done with this we are done with this now i'll show you the lateral mass fracture so technically you all can see so technically you all can see this lateral mass fracture here so this is the lateral mass fracture but that's not the point to be discussed here the point here that i need to discuss with all of you is basically jefferson's fracture which i want you to understand is burst fracture of ring of c1 that is atlas which is usually due to fall from height an interesting point is that most of the patients do not have any neurological deficit since cord is very uh, narrow and ring is very wide so if you see fracture of the anterior arch here and if you see fracture of the posterior arch here now this is very interesting this is very interesting that it involves involves both the arches together anterior as well as posterior this is jefferson's fracture moving over to the next image based question i'm sure you all can label this c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and oops c7 why did i say oops because you have a clear cut fracture here which is again a kind of an avulsion fracture of tip of spinous process of we all know that c7 has got a very prominent spinous process that is what is called vertebral prominence so avulsion fracture of tip of spinous process of c7 by the way what is this fracture called this fracture is what is called as clay shovelers fracture i'll make it even more interesting this can involve t1 as well so if there is any entrance exam where more than one option is correct believe me you can mark both c7 as t1 and if at all there is an entrance exam where only one option has to be correct and if you have to choose between the two you will choose c7 because the first classical description was given in relation to c7 so technically c7 is a better option as compared to t1 in an mcq and i'm sure you all can see the fracture quite obvious quite obvious because you can see the seat belt you can see the lower strap of the seat belt and you can see the upper strap of the seat belt and now you all can very well imagine that what are we talking about guys we are talking about chance fracture we are talking about seat belt injury we are talking about jack knife injury now this is one injury why it is called chance fracture when did chance give it why it is called jack knife injury jack fruit is a fruit it's 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 a vegetable also called kathal which is cut by jack knife in one shot sat why it is called seat belt injury because the seat belt that we used to wear in 1990s and early 2000 for our protection was the actual reason for giving this fracture because in those days of course we had seat belt but we never had airbags in the steering wheel to protect our spine so there's a sudden deceleration injury okay so bottom line is that you are driving a old car which has uh, a seat belt which you are wearing but not an airbag so when there is a sudden deceleration injury the spine goes into flexion followed by distraction followed by rotation 
and when that happens believe me that there is a horizontal fracture line which starts right from the anterior column extends into the middle column does not even stop there and goes even up to the posterior column in one shot breaking all the three columns of spine together and that was the question which was asked in the question so this is how you understand this are we able to understand this so with this we come towards the end of discussion of this question i wish you all the best